How's it going, everyone? It's Sam. Today, we're doing another portfolio review, and I think this is the third one that we've done so far, but I'm really excited about it because it's for Ben, who's in our Patreon, and he's just 21 years old and is already setting himself up in a really good way going forward. I think he's going to be able to you know, make a lot of money over his lifetime from the stock market because he's starting at such a young age. That being said, if you guys want to have one of these done for you in the future, definitely go check out our Patreon down below. We have about 11 or 12 members, and I do portfolio reviews. We're only one or two weeks out, so I don't know if I'll continue to do them on the channel. I might just do them on an individual basis in the Patreon. It adds a whole nother layer when I do it in videos, but if you guys like this kind of thing, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Also, if you want some free stocks, you can check out the links below. You can get some free stocks on Robinhood as long as you invest some money in there, and then if you deposit $100 on Weeble, you can get a stock stock worth up to $1,650. Also, if you want to join our dividend investing series, we're investing $100 a week. So by the time that I'm 60, I should have a million dollars in that account. And we are doing that every week here on the channel. I'm showing you what I buy. And if you want to support, you can use the link down below to start with M1 Finance, which is the app that we're using for this. And you can start investing there. So let's get right into the video. This is what Ben sent me. I'm 21 years old. I started investing in early April after looking at stocks for nine months on watch lists. My income is about $25,000 to $30,000 a year. I work as a personal banker in Oklahoma. So shout out to Ben because he's a personal banker. That's what I do also. I'm paid hourly plus sales incentives. My 401k through my employer, and I just started that in July. I contribute 5% for a 3% match, fully vested after three years. Most of my Weeble stocks were purchased from April to June. I've contributed $1,000 to Weeble account. My Roth was started in early July, still sitting on some cash in there, not sure what to put it in. I have been able to save up quite a bit of cash from working through high school and college, debt free as well, so props to that. The fact that your debt free is major. I was not that lucky or I was not that smart and I actually came out with a ton of debt. And he says he came out of college debt free and with my age I'm not exactly running from risk but I do only take risks when I really believe in them. My goal is to double the cash I have or his net worth within the next three to five years so I can use it as a down payment and start real estate investing down the road. So let's break this down a little bit before we look at his portfolio. He's just 21 years old, so he has a long investing horizon in front of him. I mean, he could live to be 100 years old and invest for 80 more years. His income is about 25 to 30,000 a year. So that is a decent starting point. I would say as a personal banker myself, I started higher than that. And maybe that's just the bank that he works for. It's very inconsistent. Like my bank actually raised it right before I started. And I started off at 37000 a year. I think you could probably get a higher paying job in the banking industry, but that might just be where he lives in the US too. Now I get paid significantly more than that, uh, significantly more than the 37 that I started out at. But personal banking is a good job, honestly, because you can move up to become a banking center manager. They make anywhere from fifty to eighty thousand dollars a year on average. You can also move into different banking lines of business like business banking or underwriting or investments. So there's a lot of different places you can go from there. He has a nice four oh one K through his employer. He can get a three percent match if he contributes five percent, so about a sixty percent match on what he puts in. He's already got $1,000 in Weeble, just a little bit more than that, and he has a Roth IRA, which is awesome. I think that is really important because he's not going to be taxed that much right now just because of his income, and he's not running away from risks. He's actually looking to take some risks if he really believes in them. That's great. 21 years old, no reason not to take a little bit of risk as long as it's not penny stocks that he's never heard of or anything like that, and he's looking to buy a house in three to five years. So I think that's definitely a good goal. He'll start investing in real estate much earlier than most people, and they'll make it so that he pays that off, even if it's a 30-year mortgage around the mid 50 So that would be awesome. So let's look into his portfolio here. So this is the Weeble account here between these two right here. He's got about $1,300 invested, and he's got it in AT&T, Nordstrom, Upwork, Tapestry, Cheesecake, Ally Financial, Sears Logic, Iron Mountain, Carnival, and Viacom. 
So I'm not gonna break down every one of these stocks. I'm gonna show you the two different portfolios because he's got some of the similar stocks in them and I'm gonna go over the five most common stocks in them. So this is just his Webull account here, uh, a decent amount in there, honestly, uh, over $1,000. And then this is his Roth IRA. So he has about $6,500 overall between the Roth IRA and this other account and over $6,000 in the Roth IRA. So he has Ally, Sears Logic, Nordstrom, Kroger, Planet 13, Rocket, Fidelity, uh, just a cash account or cash money management thing there, Upwork, Walgreens, and Workhorse. So all in all, a pretty strong portfolio. So the five main components or the five main stocks in here are Ally, Sears Logic, Kroger, Upwork, and Planet 13. Then he also has this JRMB2 account, which is like a target date retirement fund. Those are awesome. I mean, this is a 2065 freedom retirement fund. Uh, I think that's going to do well. That's just a really solid, very uh, safe investment. But let's look at some of these different holdings here. So Ally Financial, and again, we're not going to do a huge breakdown, but they are a bank stock, obviously, if you've ever heard of Ally Bank. Uh, they pay a nice dividend, and I really think that Ally is kind of the future of banking. So as a personal banker, I don't think we're always going to have as big a market for brick and mortar banks. So I think a lot of these brick and mortar banks are probably going to shut down just because of companies like Ally Financial, like other companies that are adding a money component, like SoFi who started in loans and then they started investing and now they have a money side. There are a lot of companies that are trying to get into banking because it's pretty profitable. And if they already have a wide audience, then they don't really have to market or try to grow. They just start making cash right away by adding this money component to their app. So I think this is kind of the future of banking, you know, not having all these brick and mortars. I'm not saying that they're all going to go away one day, but I think the ally will continue to grow and continue to do well. The next one that he has is Sears Logic, which if you haven't heard about that, it's a semiconductor company. Now, there are a couple semiconductor companies that I've looked at, one that I invest in actually, which is Qualcomm, and they all have their pros and cons. I think as a whole, semiconductors are going to continue to do well. So we're becoming more and more tech-oriented as time goes on. We're getting more and more items that are very tech-oriented, like AirPods, like computers, iPads, phones, different types of speaker equipment and lights and all this different kind of technology that's getting more and more advanced. We're going to continue to have that expand and, you know, people are getting younger and younger that that are getting all these highly technological items. So I think this is going to continue to grow over time. So I think that's probably a good investment. He has about $1,377 in Sears Logic. He had about 960 in Ally Financial. The next one is Kroger. So he has about $515 in Kroger. Just a really solid company, especially right now during the pandemic. Something like this is just really resilient. You know, people need to buy food, so it's probably a safe call to invest in something like Kroger. There's also Planet 13, which is actually the largest holding he has. So there's about $1,650 in Planet 13 here. If you've watched the channel, you know that I am a strong believer in Planet 13. I think that they're going to continue to grow, uh, so to speak, uh, but they're going to continue to grow and expand. They're looking at 5 to 10 locations in 5 to 10 years. And that's all well and good to say that, but they have really good revenue. They're increasing their revenue year after year. There's a ton of bullish points on Planet 13, and I personally am excited for the stock. I think it's going to possibly go up to $10 in the next 5 or 10 years, which would make it three times as expensive as it is now. So I think that's a pretty good investment. Definitely one of those companies like he was talking about that is maybe a little bit riskier, but it can definitely pay off in the end. Then the last stock on this list is Upwork, which he has about $724 in. This is a company that really focuses on freelancing. So it connects freelancers with people that are trying to buy different kinds of work. I think that this is a bit pricey. So it's one of those tech stocks that the PE ratio is just insane on. I don't even think they're profitable right now. But this definitely has some potential. Again, it's one of those stocks that's a little bit riskier. But in today's day and age, 
we are in a time where this is a great company to hold on to with more and more people doing freelancing, with more and more people becoming comfortable working online. And the way people like to get away from corporate America, there's a lot of potential here with the pandemic. This is kind of just one of those companies that has a lot of growth potential from people moving and transitioning into more freelancing work. So those are the main stocks they has. Again, I'm not really qualified to give you investing advice on whether you should hold them or sell them or buy them or whatever you wanna do, but those are just kind of my main thoughts. Again, I'm not breaking down all these in great depth, but I do wanna hit on the fact that he is very young still, like I said, so he is investing about 8% of his income, which I wanna break that down and kind of show where that will take him. So he's just 21 years old right now. He's making $30,000 a year. If he gets a 2.5% salary increase each year, which is not insane by any means, adjusted for inflation, if he just gets an 8% rate of return, that would give him about $796,000 by the time they 60, which is a really good amount. And this doesn't even account for the money he has now. So if you throw in, let's say $7,500 plus whatever he has in his 401k right now, because I didn't get that information, that would bump him up to about 950000 which would more than take over for his salary that he gets now. And then I would just say continue to invest in that Roth IRA too, because if you just put $2,000 a year in there, that will grow to about $478,000 by the time that you are 60 years old. So again, Ben's not being taxed that much. So I would continue plowing money in there. If you just invest what we put in here, that will give him about $1.5 million, which will mean that he can draw probably around $60,000 a year by the time he's 60. If he makes some more money and is able to put more in investments, he can retire a lot earlier. And honestly, he doesn't even need as much money as we have here. But I think just getting that maybe a little bit higher paying job right now, even if it's five or $10,000 more, maybe starting a side hustle or something. So I've done a video before about bank bonuses and I'll link it here, but I have done my own business just doing bank bonuses. And I think I made around $4,000 over the last year, maybe $5,000 from bank bonuses. So it's definitely a really highly profitable area to get into. It pays you a lot better than most stocks do. So honestly, if you started doing bank bonuses, you'd probably make a lot more money in the first year than you would from investing. So I think everyone should do that at first just to get some extra income. But that's kind of where he's sitting at. I think that you're in a great place, Ben. Uh, just continue to keep it up. If you can bump up your salary, like I said, that will just make it so much easier for you too. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you like this kind of thing and you want me to look at your portfolio, join the Patreon below. Otherwise, just let us know what you think about his portfolio in the comments and give that like button a smash. And then also, if you want to sign up for Webull or M1 Finance, you can use those links below. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.